Okay, so I'm live here with uh, Creative Artist Magazine. Is here with uh, filmmaker, writer, producer uh, Mark Ridley. And go ahead and introduce yourself, Mark. Tell us a little bit about you. So, so, so very much. Uh, yes, my name is Mark Ridley. I am an actor, writer, producer, filmmaker, director. And I'm so happy to be here with Creative Artists Magazine. Thank you for inviting me. We're happy to have you here. Um, I, I am a fan of your work. So this is quite an honor for me to be able to do this interview with you and hear more about the, your recent projects that you have going on here. And I'd like to share it with my viewers. Awesome. So I know you had something featured at the Las Vegas Film Festival. Is that it? Yeah, Las Vegas Premier Film Festival. Yes. Premier Film Festival. Okay. Right. And and what's that project? This past weekend. Oh, Sorry. great. Yeah. And what's the name of that project, if you care to share it? Yeah, well, um, both of my films I was blessed to have screened. And they are the board and my social justice film within eight hours. Okay. I, I have seen both of those. And I do, again, I'm a fan and I commend you for your awesome filmmaking. I, when I watched your films, the first thing that I just kept saying was, oh my gosh, this is real. He is a dynamo. He's a real filmmaker. This is not any, you know, amateur stuff. You are a professional and your work is quality. Um, you also have a film that I was able to watch on just by asking my Amazon to pull it up, and there it was. You want to tell me a little bit about that in, that project? It's a tough one for me. I, you know, it's a tough one because I'm a mom. So that was a heavy, heavy, heavy storyline and topic for me to swallow. But I, um, it's a dynamite film. So, you know. Stolen Breath, the, the Truth Revealed. It originates from my short award-winning film, Stolen Breath. Um, this film is about a family, a black middle-class family. Uh, but the film was good. The acting was amazing. Uh, the way that you did the, the whole um, making of the movie was, was phenomenal. Uh, the, um, that little oh, part you know, that kind of... You know, my skin wasn't quite as thick as I'd like to think it is. <laughs> I, I always, I always tell people, you get ready, hold on to your chair because this film is going to take you for a ride. It's unexpected. It um, I don't want to do something with what they, what always happens. Normally, they make men the kind of the villain, and a lot of times in our community, and I mean the black community, we do not tell our stories. We leave these very private stories alone. Um, oftentimes in the past, we didn't even go see psychiatrists, psychologists. We just went to church, prayed, got on these and prayed for our problems. Well, I want to make a notion, make a statement, and perhaps help someone, save a family, save a person, from some of the same heartaches that these these these, these members of this, this family went through. So I made this, this very powerful film, and it will shake you up. You will come away thinking about it. You I will come away you. moved, <laughs> and, and uh, hopefully you'll come away kind of a changed person. It's on Amazon Prime and in Amazon UK, as well as a streaming channel called UDC. So... Go have at it. <laughs> Woo. And um, we have a mutual friend that works on some projects with you. And um, and I'm definitely, I have to give her a shout out because she's the reason why I even know you. So um, we're going to give Wendy Barnes Farrell a shout out. And you tell me what her part is in some of your endeavors. And I know some has to do with music. Some is acting. You tell me what's going on with Wendy and um, and you. In, in the movie making world here? Well, Miss Wendy Barnes, I mean, I love her. She's such an amazing woman. She's so talented. And when I met her, I met her um, on um, 
the first of uh, the year at a concert she did. And I just enjoyed her tenacity, her style, her music. I was like, I was jamming, you know? <laughs> I was having a good time. So I invited her to uh, to this role in within eight hours to play a, a uh, the, the auntie. And she accepted it. And she did an amazing job. And in the middle of the night, after we finished filming, she wrote this piece of music for the film. I mean, it's just made my, my, my hairs pop up. I actually had tears in my eyes, you know, three, four o'clock in the morning that I heard it. Because my, 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 uh, my messenger went off and woke me up. And I looked down and I saw it was a, it was a message from Wendy. I clicked on and there was her singing the song a cappella. Wow. And it was called Enough wow. is Enough. And now that song has been immortalized into the film when, you know, within eight hours. And you got to buy her her music. You wherever have to. it is and wherever it's going to come. <laughs> yes, fantastic. Yeah. yeah. You and I was recently at a, a socially distant birthday party that she had for herself. And um, that's how, that's where we, we got together and decided we're going to uh, do this project here. And Wendy performed there. And I might be able to put up some of that clip in a little bit here. Um, we'll see <laughs> how it goes at the, in the editing room here. So that was a, a lot of fun. She is a phenomenal performer. I met her last Mother's Day. So that song, I did hear it. I love it. It goes so well with your movie. Um, and um, so what's your, what's your, what, what's going on with you, Mark? So you got these projects out there. There's another one you touched on. I think it's called The Board. Tell me a little yes, bit about that. The Board. The Board, I, uh, I wrote last year and I decided to finally come out with it. Um, the board is a, uh, what I call my, my uh, political hit piece. Board the political is a what? Hit piece. Hits. And I love the board because it, it addresses our health system and the way people are treated or not treated. And because of their social economic positions in life. So it's a kind of futuristic somewhat story, but it delves within today's reality. And it deals with 
um, a man is taken from his hospital bed by force and brought before the board to answer as to why his medical bills have not been paid. And they deal with him accordingly to what they think is best and for his statute and status in the world. Now the board, to all of my viewers out there, listen to this creative artist magazine interview. We're planning to turn this into a series. So I'm gonna be looking for investors, I'm looking for actors, and we want to get blessed with all kind of creative people because I, I'm tending to turn this board and let it rip. So you're going to see more and more about that as we go. So kind of like a series. And so you're right now, he's giving a shout out, a call out uh, uh, for actors and, and things like that to um, keep their heads up because it's coming, right? And I'm and actually going to go ahead and show a little sneak peek of that. Okay. Okay. Mr. Wilcox, white, male, age 56. Mr. Wilcox. Willie. Mr. Wilcox. No record of community service or activism. Willie. Mr. Wilcox, you owe $130,000. Were there any last minute cash arrangements made on your behalf? Sir? I love you. Your contributions to society have been noted and recorded. Where, where are you going to take it? Beautiful family. Will this be your new America? <laughs> Thank you. The Oscar goes to Mark Ridley. <laughs> okay, so um, that was just a taste of your work. Now, you wrote that and directed that. I did. I wrote that. It came out of my little mind. That was deep. That was deep. Um, so you like the tough topics. There's nothing fluffy about your stuff. You, 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 you're you're I do. in the trenches. It's so I like to, um, I have a philosophy. I like to start you out very fast and make a hard left turn. And you don't see it coming until it's there on you. Yeah. I promise you that that's exactly what you did to me <laughs> on that other movie. It, yeah, I enjoyed that. It came out fast and then took a sharp left turn on me. And all I can say is you're a phenomenal filmmaker. And I see nothing but greatness coming your way, period. You, you do an amazing job. And I'm a movie buff. A lot of the movies that I see, they have... Um, uh, like this B-roll thing to them. Your films are like a real film. Like, you know, I'm impressed. Like, I, I, I enjoy watching them. That was powerful. Now, I did get a chance to see the whole film, and I'm going to invite everyone uh, within the sound of my voice to check it out. It is, uh, it's, 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 it's a lot. It takes you on a journey, and I don't want to have any spoiler alerts too much here, but it'll take you on a journey of uh, things you think you can expect, but you get some so much more. And um, I was shocked when I well, saw it. I, I always see. my goal when I watch a movie is to not be able to guess everything that's getting ready to happen. <laughs> and, I, and I couldn't do that with your movie. <laughs> I could not do that. The, the reason I did this film, um, I really want to make a strong statement and to encourage police officers and others that we all have choices and to make good choices in our life. And, and you know, I, I want people to see the folly of what's happening. You know, I'm tired of seeing our black men and women killed by police officers and nothing happens. I'm tired of seeing people suffering and crying, losing their relatives. And when I was in the, and seen the, the Mesa, Police department that, that uh, almost shot this little girl. Just you were, in the, you so, were an officer yourself, correct? I, I used to be, yes. I, okay. I used to be, you know, and I, I, I can relate to both sides, but I feel like this if you can't, if you are that afraid, then you shouldn't be a cop. If, if every move you make, you have to pull your weapon, you should not be a cop, you know. 
I, I, I just, I mean, I feel like that. I, I didn't pull my gun every time I turn around, every time I stop the car. You know, I mean, now it's like, <sighs> shoot first, then we'll talk about it. You know, I mean, when I was a cop, you we go chase you. The, the badge of honor was to catch you. Chase you down. Now you have some bragging rights, you know? I caught you. You didn't get away, but you're alive. Yeah, now you're you a little jail bad guy. <laughs> now they just shoot you. It's going to be right. So I want people to think about it. I want people to make choices. I want I want police officers to stop and think, what if? What if? All right. So um you you what 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 else you got in your head out there? Oh wait, I have a question. So now you've made a long featured film and you've made uh shorts short films and as well as a um a series. So it's like you've done a little bit of everything. What are you looking more to do of? What type what's your next what's the next thing that you would like to do? What do you enjoy doing the most? The series type work? featured films, or short stories? Where's your mindset at? I'm open to all. I mean, I have several features that I want to do. I have a beautiful love story that's uh, between an older man and a younger woman. That's extremely powerful. I have a story that I have the rights to. I can't give this away, but about a very famous person. And I won't say I, a word. The script, the script is written, and I am looking to get that funded. So if anybody's listening and uh, want to talk to me, well, you know, uh, I can easily be contacted through Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And I'm sure uh, Ms. Pauline has my digits at the Creative Artist Magazine site <laughs> as well. So, but th- this is what I want to do. I want to continue to produce, to write to create, to open opportunities for others, give jobs, and, and and make something happen. You know, do something to make people think, to change their lives. I mean, that's really what I'm about. Um, I want to do this until they, until they carry me out. Yeah. Hopefully not I, soon. <laughs> I want to give my viewers a little bit of something, something here. I'm not going to say the word. I know how to mums the word. However, I will tell you this. When he does it, you will definitely know who it is, and you will. I, I know he's going to knock it out the ballpark. Um, this, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Really forward to his yeah, this project. You. I am too. I'm really looking. So forward anybody to it. with some money that want to see this come out the gate or discuss it with Mark, please contact Mark through social media, or you can hit me up, and I will be more than happy to help this. You, you two meet meet together. Uh, because I want to see that project. Absolutely. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mark. So I'm going to go ahead. We're going to end this uh, interview today. And I am looking forward to seeing more from you. You are a phenomenal filmmaker. Thank you so much. You want to tell me some of the, uh, um, you've been recently featured in Las Vegas. Before we go, I, I just want everybody to realize, you know, some of the, the some of your um, accolades. Oh, um, sure. You know, so I, I started this whole thing. Uh, well, I started being a, a full-time model. I started this whole entertainment business as a singer, uh, playing trumpet and sax with my family. I was very young, traveled all over. And then I became a full-time um, fashion model. I traveled I all around, that. did all the clothes magazines, did some, <laughs> did some covers of some magazines back when I was a little bit younger, you know? and. Uh, I just kind of morphed into film, commercials. Next thing I was doing, a lot of acting. And uh, so my whole goal, like I said now, is just to direct, write, continue to produce content and get it out to the world and open some some doors, you know, and uh, continue to strive for it, you know, as as I grow and still learn. And it's a lot of learning, a lot of learning. And I'm open to that. And I want to thank you for having me on so much. I've really enjoyed it. Your magazine is terrific. I, I, I want to see it grow, and I'll be promoting it and telling all my friends. It's a, it's a really great magazine. Thank you. I appreciate that. 
Coming from you, that means a whole lot. Thank you. I appreciate it so much. Um, I'm humbled right now in your presence because um, um, I, again, I once everybody sees your work, they're going to know what I'm feeling right now uh, because your work is really going to speak for itself. So I encourage everybody out there to go and check his work out. Um, you've been in a few movies too, though. You want to name a few of those movies you've been in, Mark? Oh my God. It's my... It's really a long list, but I, I'll, I'll name a couple that I really enjoyed too. I, that's okay. a movie that's on Amazon Prime called Brown Paper Bag. That's a movie called Blue Spoon. My 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 uh, director and partner in this, I mean my producer and writer, is Lakeisha Kendrick. Wrote it. I directed it. Girlfriends, friends. It's called Blue Spoon. Okay. And it's very 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 good. Um, it's a very warm story about a relationship between four women, you know? And then I did a film called Being Black Enough, where I play the father to the lead, and from a young man that doesn't think he's black enough, because he comes from the valley, and he's kind of kept away from the hood, so to speak. So a very, very interesting movie. Very. Plus, I've done some stuff, you know, like Ray Donovan, you know, when he was on, and various commercials and so forth, pilots, you know. And I do a little stand-up here and there. So I, I like... That's what I was waiting for you to get to, is your comic. Um, because that shocked me. It's like a trivial question. <clears throat> and and for me, when you mentioned that to me, I didn't see it coming. So you, you did some stand-up, because, you know, I've, I've featured several comedians. And who doesn't like to laugh, you know? Um, so what where did right. you do your stand-up right. at? Well, you know... I've done a few clubs around. I've done the, the uh, Ha Ha Cafe. I've done um, the Belly Room at the Comedy Store. I've done the Lab Factory and various places around town. But like wow. I said, that's something that I said. Yeah, I don't stay at this. You know, I really have focused more on my film. I do enjoy it. It's nothing like standing in front of a crowd and getting booed or getting them to <laughs> laugh with you, you know? Fortunately, yes. I haven't been booed that much. You know, you know, I've had my couple of close moments, but I've had some fun, you know. It's a lot of fun. I have some comedy things I've done, but it's not good for certain years, you know. I'm a little blue, but I have fun with it and enjoy it. So if you want to get some laughs, you know, go on my on my page on YouTube. I have a couple of things up there, you know. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we're going to say thank you. And anybody, um, I'm just going to invite you once again, please check out Mark Ridley's uh, filmmaking work. Um, we have um, uh, we have the, the board. Uh, we have the uh, Stolen Breath. And then the um, uh, Eight Hours. For the Within eight hours. eight hours. Within Eight Hours, right. right. And uh, Wendy wrote the soundtrack, the music for that one. And I just love the song. It, it's touching right. her part in it. And um, yeah, please check those out. And uh, thank, thank you so, so much. much again. All right. Thank you for having me. You're welcome.